Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hello, I'm Mario Taniguzzi, and this is Calgary's podcast on Canada's Podcast Network. Joining me today is Emma May, who is founder of Sophie Grace in Calgary. Thanks uh, for joining us, Emma. Thanks, Mario, for having me. Appreciate it. Well, let me ask you, first of all, uh, what is Sophie Grace and what do you do? Uh, We are a women's wear line. And really what I did was I created something that was about giving women mix and match separates that are super, super comfortable and work appropriate and make life really, really easy for professional women. So um, yeah, I kind of dreamt it up in my closet after spending 20 years as a working professional and wondering why nobody made some of the things that I wanted to make and we created it. Mm -hmm. So tell me what your presence, like uh, where's uh, the stuff uh, uh, sold through? So basically we are a direct to consumer site. So I control everything. So we control our design, we control our production, we control marketing and then distribution. So we sell online relatively, pretty much almost exclusively. I've got a showroom in Vancouver and we have a showroom in Calgary as well. So we do do private by appointments here. We do some virtual appointments, but really everything runs through our site. So we are an online site, sophiegrace.ca, and that's where we sell most of our stuff. Well, yeah, nearly everything. And and sorry, what year did you start this? Uh, I I started selling in January of 2020, just before pandemic. (laughs) Yeah. And and And, and timing. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And, and, and can you uh, talk a little bit about the uh, the history behind the name? How uh, Where's the name come from? Uh, well, I named it after my daughter. So I like to say I can't screw it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, and it was really for me about it was a cla- it was something classic. I started out thinking I wanted to call it something else, which was kind of like hip. And and then what I realized was actually what I was creating was something that was um, really timeless. And so. The names spoke to me in that way, right? That it was about something that really wasn't, it was, you know, our styles are really timeless and they're meant to last for a long time and not be sort of dated and super, they're not either, they're not, they're neither fashion forward nor, you know, dowdy. So we were all about classics. And who would you say your your typical uh, uh, customer is? Uh, We cater to... Honestly, like the rock star women in Canada, um, they are professionals who are senior executives, uh, accountants, lawyers, doctors, CEOs, um, politicians, every side of the aisle we've covered. Um, yeah. So those are those are I, I find I think we did a survey and we found that something like 16 percent of our customers actually have four degrees or more. Oh, wow. Yeah. So most of them are, yeah, they're highly educated and they're independent. Um, they control their own, you know, spending, like no one's watching their credit card spend. They decide what they want to buy and when they want to buy it. Yeah. Okay. Super. Yeah. So in reading your, uh, your bio, uh, Emma, <laughs> you know, I see <laughs> that you're a lawyer, <laughs> yeah. lawyer turned realtor turned fashion retailer. So how does, how does a, a lawyer end up becoming a realtor and then a fashion retailer? And you do uh, both at the same, I do both right now, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not doing as much real estate right now. I mean, I still, am, I still have an interest in Charles real estate, which I found it. Um, and I do some work for, you know, special clients, but I'm not doing a ton primarily because this thing is taken off and um, it's a growing, going concern, as we say. And it's, yeah, it's moving. Yeah, it's eating all my brain, <laughs> I like to say. Uh, but yeah, I start, I mean, that's how I, I think, I guess, I guess the answer to that is that um, my career path was interesting and different because I was a woman and I was a mother. Um, and so all of the challenges that that presented made me have to pivot and shift and do things a bit differently. Um, I met my husband at law school, graduated, I ended up with a, you know, I worked with the UN and overseas. Um, I worked at a big law firm in Vancouver. And then, uh, when I was 28, I got pregnant and I had my daughter, Sophie, and uh, that changed my career path. It was a very difficult road to, you know, to to push forward on being a mom and um, a lawyer at that time. So it was about 20, it was 20 some years ago now. And um, yeah, she's 20. 
And so my husband was sort of a, you know, pursuing the law as well. He's a corporate finance lawyer and having two lawyers in the family was hard. So I did it for 10 years, had two kids, um, worked in, you know, private practice for a bit, did it, did in-house for a bit. Um, but I struggled getting the files that were really interesting. I struggled with the billable hour. I struggled being the mom that I wanted to be. And so uh, I decided, and I was heavily involved in my community. You know, I was sort of like on the PTA, you name it, right? And then I was like, well, maybe I need to find a way that I can um, leverage my, you know, negotiation skills, my experience, my commitment to my community into a job where I had more flexibility. Mm. Um, and so that was why I went into real estate, right? It was really, it was, it was yeah. a way for me to be able to still um, work and to still be engaged and to still have an independent income, a good independent income, right? And, uh, and build my career that way. And at the time that I left law, um, you know, that didn't go over well with my family. <laughs> They're <were> like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, why are you quitting becoming a, why are you quitting being a lawyer, a lawyer to become a realtor? Like, are you insane? Like you spent all these years at school to do this. Right. But it was, you know, from in many ways, it was a great career for me for that period of my life. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, right? Because I, I, uh, I recently spoke with, uh, uh, <clears throat> another woman that was basically the same uh, kind of scenario that you're describing, right? She, she was an investment banker back East and uh, she, uh, same thing, you know, I had a child and uh, started a family and, and you couldn't, as she said, I think she couldn't put 17 hours on, at the desk anymore. And uh, so she ended up buying a, 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 a little a company and uh, she's, yeah. And uh, she's uh, in the retail sector, and uh, the the business is just like booming, one of the fastest growing in Canada. So she yeah. managed to to transfer and find ways to transfer the skills that she had into a new venture, so to speak, right? Right, and into one where she can, you know, for me it was yeah. How how do I control, you know, what I do? And I think it's I think it's a bit easier sometimes for women who are more established in their careers when they have kids, right? Like, but when you're younger and you have a kid and you're you know, battling out the hours and the bill of yeah. hour. It's, you know, it's a grind. And it ended up with me making different decisions about the path I was going to take. Mm, and I wasn't always happy about those decisions. Yeah. Right. Like, this wasn't, it's funny because people were like, oh, you've had such an interesting career. And it's like, yeah, it wasn't like, it wasn't a plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So tell me uh, uh, about being an entrepreneur. What do you like about it? Um, well, I know that I am actually pretty ADD. So, uh, I like the, I like how new everything is all the time, right? Like I like the challenge of that. I like the intensity of it. I like the fact that, um, I can control the direction of where things are going. I love building teams, right? Like I love bringing together people who are really, really good at what they do and then pursuing this sort of common goal together. So, you know, that part of it's all like, it's just really exciting. It's like this idea, it's about, you know, I have this idea and I did it with Charles Real Estate. I did it when I sort of did the community work around the flood stuff too. And it's about, I have this vision and idea and then sitting down and how do I make it real? Like, how do I turn it into this real thing that's tangible and actually, um, you know, has got legs and, and then exists in and of itself and becomes something that is, other than me, not just this thing that lives in my head. Mm. Like that, that part of it is really, really satisfying and really fun. It's like, it's, it's a creative process more than anything else. Yeah. On the flip side of that, what uh, don't you like about being an entrepreneur? Um, there isn't much I don't like. I think, I think the, you know, the, um, right now I'm running a heavy cash flow intense business, right? Like we have to make investments pretty far out. So managing growth and cash flow and the pressure around um, knowing that really it's my responsibility to make sure that everybody gets paid and make sure that, you know, uh, that we, that things work <laughs> um, and that, that we continue to grow and move forward. That that's, you know, that stress level is a different level of stress than, um, 
you know, than, than just sort of doing the work. And it's really not a bit like it's, it's, I have people's, you know, um, yeah, you, you have people's lives and livelihoods a bit in your hands. Right. And then when people are investing in you, um, I'm now at the point where, you know, I've got investors who are coming in from outside, right? Like they are trusting me to uh, maximize the value of their dollar, right? And yeah. to and to and to achieve the things that I set out to achieve. So the res- I think just the responsibility around that is, I like it, but it's you know it weighs on you some nights. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so beyond uh, the work uh, uh, that you do, uh, like what other interests uh, uh, do you have? Too many. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I've, I mean, I've always been interested in my community. I worked for, you know, I, I did some of the flood stuff. Um, I, you know, formed an organization after the floods of 2013 that really got me kind of invested in my community and then ended up working for Jim Prentice in the uh, premier's office as executive director to him. So, I mean, I'm always kind of, you know, I'm, I guess I have interest in politics. I, I hate partisanship. Um, but I do have an interest in policy and politics and, you know, how things shape up. Uh, I always joke that I'm, you know, when I'm in Calgary, I'm considered a liberal pinko. And then when I go to Vancouver, I'm like this fascist, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I don't, I, I don't really fit anywhere in yeah. terms of my, some of my leanings. Um, but I, you know, I have an interest in good policy and I think it makes a difference in, in our communities and, yeah. you know, in, and in people's lives. So, uh, I, I probably I'm too interested, maybe sometimes I'm too interested in it, but yeah, I think it matters. So, so I'm curious, Emma, like, yeah, you know, not to get into uh, too much of a political discussion, yeah. but, but obviously uh, it is a keen interest of yours. Uh, what troubles you today about the state of politics in this country? Uh, I would say today, very much so, and I was just talking about it this morning, is um, conspiracy theory nut- <laughs> nuttery. Um, yeah. I think, I, think uh, I actually think some of the, and I, I, and I do believe this is actually, I mean, the left has got its own issues, they eat their own. Um, you know, they can get really out of touch with people, I think, but I think right now there's factions on the, uh, on the right which are going down a very dangerous path. Um, you know, when people throw around the word globalists and things like that, these are, you know, anti-Semitic tropes that um, uh, we really don't need in in our governance, right? And in our parties. And I think we need to have, you know, I was laughing, but I was like, we need the, who's going to be the Liz Cheney of the Conservative Party right now? Who's going to stand up and say, whoa, 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 guys, like, let's get back to talking about what's effective tax policy, um, how do we make help help business grow? How do we set a path for the future? Um, we don't, you know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of garbage out there right now, and I think it's uh, and I think it's I think it's dangerous actually. Okay, um, and just uh, going back to being an entrepreneur, uh, yeah. you know, and, and as you said, you you right in the midst of the pandemic, and uh, you know, uh, uh, setting this up, uh, setting up this business, um, what pieces of advice would you have for a would-be entrepreneur uh, that that wants to start a business uh, in this day and age? I think be really clear about what it is that you want to do, right? And I think think having real clarity around what it is that you, what problem you're solving, um, who is your customer, and what, what you want to achieve at the end of the day. And then also actually really loving what you do because it's a lot of, like, it's a lot of work. Right. Yeah. And, it, and it's 24 seven. There's no getting away from that. And if you, if you don't love it, you're going to give up. Right. And if, and if you're not really clear on who your customer is or what it is that you want to do, um, it's harder, right? Like it's, it's, uh, the, the times that I've had success with things, and this doesn't mean I haven't had like a thousand other ideas for stuff, right? But the times that it, I find it's connected is is because I have a very simple core thing, mm. and that, and I can find a way to meet a need that people want. Um, and I think we can get carried away a bit with like 
you know, and, and it's okay to be niche and it's okay to focus on a, on a very niche customer. Right. And, and sometimes that niche customer will turn into something that's like bigger and not so niche. I mean, if you think about like Lululemon, when they started out, right. Like yoga pants was a pretty niche, yeah. uh, pre, you know, like it, everyone was like, really yoga pants. How many people do yoga at the time? Not a ton of people were doing yoga. Right. But I mean, it turned into this like global thing, but that was because he had a very clear vision at, at the beginning of who his customer was and what they wanted and what he wanted to give them. Um, and so that, I think that's, that's the differentiator, um, between things that are successful and things that aren't, you love my dogs in the office. I know. I just like, I, <laughs> I got another one here under my feet. <laughs> I love the fact that he just kind of sauntered from the back and just got a nice yeah. little spot on got the, on the couch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and that's a, a part of the, the joy. Well, of that's the best part, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. No one tells me I can't bring my dogs to work. <laughs> there you go. Well, thanks, Emma, for uh, joining us today. Yeah, you're welcome, Mario. Great to connect. And thank you. All right. Super. That was Emma May, who is founder of Sophie Grace in Calgary. I'm Mario Tanaguzzi. This has been Calgary's podcast on Cal Canada's podcast network. Thanks for joining us today.